Hello, everybody. My name is Abby Krusel, and I wanted to thank you for joining me for the Creating Healthy Habits presentation. We are all likely experiencing quite a bit of change right now, and it can be very helpful to either maintain or create healthy habits. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns as we go along, please feel free to reach out to us through email. Here is a brief overview of what we will be covering today. We will start with the benefits of creating healthy habits. We will review some of the myths around how habits are created. Then we will go over the key strategies to creating habits. And lastly, we will review how to set a habit goal and create an action plan. We all have many habits we have created over time. Some of these are useful and some may not be so useful. Some habits that many people have created over time might be brushing your teeth or drinking coffee first thing in the morning. However, due to the changes happening right now, many of us have gotten out of our normal routines and may have started to develop other habits. Again, some useful and others not so useful. When we consider developing new habits, there are many benefits. Here are just a few. When we add or change certain lifestyle factors such as exercise, healthy eating, or managing medications, we can possibly prevent or manage certain health conditions such as heart disease, stroke, or diabetes. One great benefit of creating healthy habits is the change becomes more automatic. We don't have to constantly think about the changes we are trying to make, we just do them. When our changes become automatic, this allows us to be more efficient at work and at home. We might even experience an increase in energy or mood. I'm sure many of you heard that it takes just 21 days to create a healthy habit. This is only partially true and depends on the habit you are trying to create. The time it takes to create new habits depends on the motivation and difficulty on the new behavior. The more motivation and the more difficult the action, the longer it will take to create a new habit. Here are some examples. It will take an average of 21 days to create a new habit of drinking one glass of water after breakfast. If you up the motivation and the difficulty, for example, a 10 minute walk after breakfast, this will also increase the time to create a new habit to an average of 65 days. Another example is 50 sit-ups after breakfast. This will take an average of 90 days to create a new habit. As you can see, 21 days to create a new habit is not always accurate. However, we will go over a few key elements to make it a habit stick. When you're creating a new habit, it is important to follow certain guidelines. The first is to start very small. It is very common to want to make big changes. This can often set us up for failure. I'm sure many of you have tried to make a big change and this likely worked for a little while, but might have been hard to maintain. You'll want to choose something you can do consistently, not occasionally. Depending on the habit you're wanting to create, this might be daily or Monday through Friday or on work days. The best way to create a habit is through repetition, consistency, and practice. Think about a habit that you have already created. You did this action over and over and over again, and before you know it, you just do it and likely don't want to put a lot of effort into getting started. Starting with small actions can be key to creating change that is automatic. And when I say small, I mean so small that you cannot fail. The benefits in starting really small are, we want quick wins. This can be dramatically increasing motivation. As we mentioned before, we want changes that require little motivation and as little effort as possible. If you start small, you can always gradually build over time. It's very important to just get started. This will also increase your confidence that can change what can actually happen. Now that we know the keys to creating habits, we are going to learn how to set a habit goal. When we set a habit goal, we wanna focus on performance goals, not outcomes. An outcome is the end result. We wanna focus on the action or the behavior. Remember, to create a habit, we will need to start small and have repetition and consistency. As we are all going through a lot of change right now, our performance goals might be related to something completely different than that we would normally focus on and that's okay. Here are some examples of performance goals. Walk 10 minutes a day, five days per week. Meditation two minutes, Monday through Friday, or one serving of fruits on work days.
I'm sure some of you have heard of SMART goals. Using a SMART goal has a much higher likelihood of achievement rather than just focusing on the outcome. We want this goal to be specific, measurable, action-oriented, realistic, and time-bound. Let's take a look at these more in depth. You will want your goal to be as specific as possible. A specific goal has a much greater chance of being accomplished. To set a specific goal, you must answer the six W questions. Number one, who? Who is involved? Number two, what? What do I want to accomplish? Number three, where? Identify a location. Number four, when? Establish a time frame. Number five, which? Identify requirements and constraints. Number six, why? Specific reasons, purpose, or benefits of reaching the goal. An example of a general goal would be get in shape. What is getting in shape? This gives us no time frame of reference. We will want a specific goal like taking a virtual exercise class 15 minutes at lunch, Monday through Friday. We also need the habit goal to be measurable. This will establish concrete criteria for measuring progress. When you measure your progress, you stay on track, reach your target dates, and experience the exhilaration of achievement that spurs you on to continue effort required to reach your goal. To determine if your goal is measurable, ask these questions. How much? Maybe how much time can I commit to each day? Or how many? For example, how many glasses of water can I start drinking? Or how will I know when my goal is accomplished? Make sure that your goal includes the action that will help to improve your health. Some examples would be, I will walk 10 minutes each day. I will eat two servings of fruits and vegetables each day. I will sleep seven hours each night. The habit goal you choose must be something you are both willing and able to do. Again, this might look very different today than it did a month ago. What was realistic then may not be realistic today with all of our changes. You're the only one who can decide just how high your goal should be. A great way to gauge how realistic a habit goal is, is to use the confidence scale. On a scale of one to 10, how confident you are that you can actually accomplish your goal. A 10 would be you are absolutely sure you can accomplish your goal with 100% accuracy. A one would be there is no way you can accomplish your goal. For a habit goal, your confidence should be a nine or a 10 on the scale. Your goal should be so small that you cannot fail. Ways to know if your goal is realistic would be to determine if you have accomplished anything similar in the past. What conditions would have to exist to accomplish this goal? Your goal is probably realistic if you truly believe that it can be accomplished. A goal should be grounded within a time frame. With no time frame tied to it, there is no sense of urgency. By anchoring your goal within a time frame, such as by May 1st, then you set your unconscious mind to, into motion to begin working on the goal. Without a time frame, there is no sense of urgency, and someday is not a time frame. Let's take a look at what a SMART goal is and what it is not. For example, I want to lose 30 pounds. No, this would not be a SMART goal. We have no time frame and there's no action. I will walk at lunch for 15 minutes, Monday through Friday by the end of one month. Yes, this would be a SMART goal. Assuming this is realistic, this would have everything we need for it to be a SMART goal. I will not eat fast food. No, this would not be a SMART goal. I will meditate for 10 minutes before bed on Sunday through Thursday by May 1st. Yes, this is a SMART goal. I will exercise more during the week. No, this is not a SMART goal. What is more? One more minute, one more hour. When will this be done? And finally, I will sleep more. No, this is not a SMART goal. Again, this is missing crucial information to be a SMART goal. After determining your SMART goals, the next step is confirming why you want or need to make the change. The step is important so that you already know why exactly, why or not you want to make the change. This is based solely on you and cannot be determined by anyone else. When you identify goals that you are most important, you begin to figure out ways you can make them come true. 
You develop attitudes, abilities, and skills to reach them. You begin seeing previously overlooked opportunities to bring yourself closer to the achievement of your goals. Ask yourself, why is this goal or habit important to me? Everyone's answer will be different. Here are some examples. You might want to feel better, have more energy, increase your confidence, enjoy time with your family, or enjoy quality of life as you age. Your why will keep you going when you don't feel like making the change. Other questions to ask yourself when making a change would be, have you ever tried to make this change before? If yes, were you successful? If not, what were your barriers? How did your results make you feel? Do you have a support system or partner? If yes, what can that support system or partner do to help you succeed? Having a support right now is especially important as many people are feeling very isolated in their current situation. You will need some kind of support, whether a friend, mentor, or a spouse. This is someone to whom you're accountable, someone who can check to see how you are progressing. The most important part of determining this partner is to ensure that they actually care about you and you can be honest with them. The final step would be to take action. Next, we are going to set a SMART habit goal, something that you can work towards for the next six weeks, taking it one step at a time. Please take a minute to think of or write down your own six week SMART habit goal on a piece of paper. Here are some examples of a six week habit goal and a one week action plan. You may or may not be at your six week goal right now, but you want to start with something small. Remember the confidence scale one to 10. You will want to be at a 10 with your one week action plan. If you have questions or need care, we recommend reaching out to a tri-health provider in your community. Here are some close by. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please reach out to us through email.